Greetings, fellow citizens. This is Citizen Kong. I thought I would tell you about a movie I saw, and I, I want to thank Gordon Iyer138 for offering some encouragement, because lately I've been seeing some movies, and uh, I've always seen films that, that I enjoy, but I thought maybe you might uh, care to hear, I could share with you some films that I've seen recently. Uh, the first in the series, besides the one I mentioned on uh, The Last Fez Night, which by the way was called Royal Deceit, and I forgot to mention it had Kate Beckinsale in it. Um, I, I mentioned uh, Gabriel Byrne and uh, go back and watch The Fez Night. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Christian Bale, that's what I was trying to think of, and, and Helen Mirren. And uh, it was kind of a it was kind of a small film. I won't go into that because I'm going to talk about God Bless America, which is a movie I saw on Netflix uh, streaming, and uh, starring Joel Murray and Tara Lynn Barr. Uh, Joel Murray plays Frank Murdoch. You probably recognize him. I think I've seen him in some sitcoms. He's never like the the star, but he's usually like the the friend or the neighbor or something like that. And Tara Lynn Barr, I haven't seen before, but she's very good. Uh, the plot, generally, is a, a man that's basically fed up with uh, American culture as, it's, as it stands. Um, everything's going wrong for this man. Uh, he's divorced. Uh, he lives alone, has a really, like, asshole neighbors with a really thin wall. Uh, so he hears everything that they do, all the shouting and the kids' baby crying and them having sex and, and he's got insomnia and he can't sleep and uh, he, he ends up in some, you know, there's one part of the movie where he's having a heated discussion with one of his co-workers who's defending th things like American Idol and uh, reality TV shows and uh, talk radio in the morning, you know, like in San Diego, like some of the cities they call, you know, like the zoo or that sort of Howard Stern sort of thing where it's all full of yucks and, and everything. And, and uh, Frank might come across as kind of a snob in some ways, uh, but I think he's touching on something that a lot of us feel. I feel this way. Uh, there's always been a, always been all over the world, well, let's talk about the United States. In the United States, there's always been a segment of society that enjoys the fart jokes, the people that would go to vaudeville, the, the regular sort of street musicians. I mean, people that are not aspiring to some higher, higher thing, like, I don't know, opera or literature or something like that. But the difference is back then is that if you were trying to aspire to uh, learn to appreciate fine art or, or fine music, or fine literature, you weren't looked down upon. It was these people that enjoyed the fart jokes and the pies in the face and all that sort of stuff that was looked down upon. And, or at least tolerated. But now it's, it seems to me more and more uh, American society is, is embracing the crass and the uh, I want to say absurd, but that doesn't quite put my finger on it. The lowbrow. In fact, it's almost become like a, uh, a sort of element of pride for a lot of Americans. I mean, look at the ratings that shows like American Idol get. Or I don't follow reality, reality TV much very much, but there's like, I guess, the Kardashians, the New, Jer New Jersey Shore, where people are entertained by people at their worst, and uh, self-centered, uh, egocentric, people that are privileged and act like little children. And these are the things that Frank is very upset about. And not only is he very critical of the way American culture is going, but his own personal life is, is just really bad. I started to tell you he was divorced. He has a really bratty daughter that wants nothing to do with him, a young child. Uh, he uh, has insomnia, so he watches a lot of late night TV and switching the channels, and he watches these reality programs. And, and one of them is about this this girl that it's sort of like that. Uh, 
I don't know, I've, I've heard about these shows where some girl's having a big party and they do like a reality show about it, like, like a king, quinceanera or, or a prom night or something like that. And he's watching the show and this girl is just acting like a brat. Uh, her father gave her a brand new car and she wanted an Escalade instead of whatever he bought her, like a Camaro or something. And she, she throws a fit because she wanted an Escalade. And Frank's daughter uh, gets pissed off because, and she's like eight or nine years old, and she's upset because the mother bought her a Blackberry rather than an iPhone. Have I talked enough about what's upsetting him? He, he finds out that he has a brain tumor. And all, of it, all it is, okay, the main bit of the plot, and I'm trying to set it up for you with how far He's gone, he's almost, he, he's suicidal. You know, things are just really, he just feels really awful about his personal life and the way he sees things going in, in America. Hence the term, the title, God Bless America. But rather than taking his own life, he's about to put the gun in his mouth, about to blow off, blow his brains out, and he's watching that reality TV program with that blonde-haired girl that's, it's acting the privileged, rich brat. And he decides that he's going to go kill her. <laughs> His anger is directed outward. And he... We meet the other character, the young girl. Uh, and what was her name again? Roxy. He's sitting at, he's basically, oh, he's, he, uh, he steals his neighbor's Camaro. I'm sorry, I'm going through every plot bit, but whatever. If you don't like movie reviews, I mean, there's two types of movie reviews, and I'm trying to blend both. One is where you basically explain the story, and then the other part is where, I shouldn't have to be explaining this. <laughs> I digress. I'll try to move on. I won't give everything away. So that's how he meets Roxy, is uh, he's basically scoping out the school where this, this girl goes to school, and, uh, and Roxy sees him sitting there, and she basically calls him a creep because, you know, he thinks that he's, like, checking out the young girls and stuff, which he is, but he's looking for this one particular one. And uh, he, in a fumbled attempt, and I'll leave that out, he does kill her. And the teenage girl, Roxy, Frank becomes her hero because she hates that girl. And she's a young, cynical, she's like 14, but she's, she's more mature, you know, she's mature. she comes across as more mature than 14. And um, Frank, like I said, becomes her hero. She is really happy to see this happen to that girl because she hates her. And she's cynical, and there's a lot of things in society that she doesn't like, and she thinks all these people deserve to die. You know, people that, that, that offer the high five, they deserve to die. <laughs> she has a whole list of things. <laughs> but naturally, so she shows up at Frank's uh, motel room. She kind of figures out where he is. There's the Camaro, the yellow Camaro he stole from his neighbor, and he's, he's basically on a rampage. And uh, she talks him into tagging along. So they become a sort of uh, Bonnie and Clyde uh, serial killers. And, uh, of course, Frank is uncomfortable with traveling with this young girl, and it's, it's, handled, it's handled very well. He comes across as more of a father figure to her. And uh, she gives him some, some story about, you know, how her, she's poverty-stricken and her mom's on crack or something, so he says, what the hell, you can come along. And uh, so they sort of move to onto their next thing. And for me, of course, uh, none of these people deserve to die. And I'm feeling like their reaction to Frank's reaction to what's happening in society uh, is, is an overreaction. It is over the top. And Roxy, you know, I could see like a smart kid you know, the whole thing is just, it's just disgusted by the whole phony high school thing. And like, 
I mean, from an early age, seeing the meaningless of it all, I relate to that. And uh, so I ended up cheering these people on. And uh, it culminates in a, uh, a sort of American Idol type thing. And, and one of the things, you know, like on American Idol, I mean, it's kind of a different name for the show, but, you know, you recognize it as American Idol, is that, uh, and I'll grant it, I'm one of those people. My favorite part, I don't even, I don't watch American Idol, but I used to enjoy the, the part where they went up to the, like, it's the beginning with the auditions. I'm fascinated by the people who think they're, they, they're very talented. They're convinced in their minds they are, but uh, they, they really, they're not. And uh, there's this one character that comes across as he's probably mentally, he's not, he suffers from some sort of development, disability or something, and everybody is kind of making fun of him. And, and he seems unaware. He basically likes the attention. And Frank feels really bad for this guy. And he feels that uh, the judges in this, in this contest and all the fans of this show, basically, uh, one of my favorite parts is they end up in a movie theater and people that use their cell phones in the movie theater and, uh, and talk over the film and are just annoying. And uh, there's been times where I fantasize of standing up and taking a gun and shooting him. <laughs> this movie, it just lives out my fantasies, right? I enjoyed it. And uh, so, it, and there's satire. There's, it's, it's, it's dark humor, but there's political satire. One of the interesting things in there is uh, they go after some, like, uh, white radio uh, TV talk, like a typical Fox kind of guy that's this crazy, like, Bill O'Reilly type, loud, mean, conservative. And, uh, and Frank thinks he should die just because he's mean. And Roxy doesn't like the guy either. But uh, as it turns out, Frank says, well, you know, I, did, I do agree with him on some stuff. And she said, what? He says, I don't believe in gun control. <laughs> and Roxy is very liberal. She's like, oh, no, we totally need gun, gun control. And, uh, uh, and then on the gun thing, for Frank's final, final exit, he, he basically at one point he ditches Roxy. But for his final exit, he goes to this American Idol type show. And uh, he wants to take out as many people as possible. So what does he do? What does he, do? he buys a, an assault rifle. And uh, so now that I've given the entire plot away, it could still be enjoyable for you to watch. I mean, there's not anything really special to say about the photography, but I liked the script. And uh, there was nothing glaringly wrong about the way the, the movie was executed. I'd have to say I'm very, very surprised how talented Bobcat Goldthwait is. And so uh, if you like dark humor and you feel upset by the dumbing down of America, I highly recommend this film. All right, that's Citizen Kong. That's Citizen Kong. This is Citizen Kong. Thanks for listening to my little movie review, and I hope I didn't spoil too much of it. There's lots of surprises still left. All right, cheers.